because your life could be in a completely different place one year from today. And that all depends on the choices you make today. What is going on guys? Kevin Cage here with another cryptocurrency update. Before diving into some XRP news, wanted to highlight that on Binance US, I have finally received some of my Songbird. We can come up here and click the wallet tab and scroll all the way down and we can see that we finally got some Songbird listed on Binance US. Now, when I mean listed, it is not available for trading. I can see my balance. Notice there's no actual live price feed, but the benefit is that I can finally withdraw this and begin leveraging this throughout Flare Networks. So about 10,472 Songbird, and we can see the current price at about 18 cents. So I'm not gonna complain about another $2,000, but notice this, looking at the price history, Songbird launches double top around that 70 cent price level, and this is where Binance US holders get their Songbird, right at the bottom. This is how the game is played, and this is why DeFi is better than CeFi. Leveraging DeFi, leveraging trust lines, leveraging the sum wallets is always better than relying on the CeFi centralized finance exchanges like Binance US, Bitstamp, Coinbase, or anything in between. And you guys know in the past I had some XRP scattered throughout Uphold, Binance, Bitrue, and then also did my own self-custody. I wanted to do a little bit of everything, but in hindsight, I just would have been better off doing self-custody getting my Songbird immediately. In other news, Uphold Sharing, we are excited to announce that we'll be supporting the upcoming Solo airdrop of Sologenic, following the snapshot on 12.24, so in two days, at 8 p.m. UTC. Customers who hold XRP on Uphold on that specific date will be credited. Initial support will not include trading or withdrawals. Hmm. In full disclosure, I do not own any solo whatsoever, but I'm wishing everybody well involved with the project, and for those of you that have been following along carefully, just wanted to share another airdrop that is somewhat related to the XRP community. And also, this is for anybody that may be losing hope or losing patience in the crypto market during this holiday season. This is Terra Luna. She has skyrocketed from sub $1 prices all the way up until the top 10. This asset has done, from its all-time low price, over a 700x return. 700x. Could this be a 1000x asset? Amazing. And for those of you that have been watching the channel for the past couple years, I know back in May 2020, we were buying Terra Luna. And look at this, around 18, 19 cents. Now, the most I ever owned was anywhere from 250,000 to 300,000 tokens. And guess what, guys? Yes, I more than doubled my money, but I sold the bulk of it too early in accumulation. Let's just say 250,000 tokens times the current price of Luna today at $90. Now, of course, I probably wouldn't have held it this long to be completely transparent, but that would have been worth $22.5 million today. Now, hey, I probably would have just panic sold if I got that bag up to a million dollars, to be fair, or, you know, would have sold at, you know, $4 or $10 or anything like that. But I just wanted to show you that there is still opportunity in this market. And if I just held for a year and a half and kept up with the developments, that $50,000 investment would have been worth over $20 million dollars insane. Now, instead of getting down and sad about it and playing that coulda, woulda, shoulda mindset, I am looking for the next opportunities because your life could be in a completely different place one year from today. And that all depends on the choices you make today. I'm wishing Terra Luna, the whole ecosystem, well, a very, very strong ecosystem. However, I'm just a lot more focused on some lower cap assets that have yet to have those gigantic returns like Casper and API3. With these assets, whether they're up only 100% or even 4 or 500% up from their all-time low, that's what I'm a lot more interested in. Provided they're continuing to build, you can keep an eye on their GitHub and see what they're developing. And I think that these assets are going to have a very strong 2022. Okay, really quick now before diving into some Ripple and XRP news. We have Blockworks sharing. Coinbase has a 4% interest rate on USDC, the US dollar coin stablecoin. Deposits would be 50 times the national average of a traditional savings account. The SEC, let's not do that. And we can see an APY comparison right here between a list of some of the world's largest banks. Coinbase, if you have USDC and decide to hold it in your account, you get 4% annually. Discover? 0.4%. USDC already offers 10 times more than that. Now getting down to Chase, 0.01%. US Bank, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, there is no competition. And that's not even considering, you know, getting off Coinbase and going into some serious DeFi protocols. This is simply just putting some USDC or US dollar into USDC on Coinbase and staking it for 4%. Now I know that might be boring to some of you, but I just wanted to show you the difference between Coinbase and what the global financial institutions are offering today. 
I know some other accounts, whether it's 15%, 30%, or even you know 50% APY. The higher APY typically has a much higher risk, but I will go down on record and believe that USDC is a very safe alternative to the US dollar. I'm only interested in ROI here, nothing else, not married to any asset. Okay, so we have Brad Garlinghouse, CEO of Ripple. One year ago today, the SEC filed a lawsuit against Ripple. Chris Larson and Brad Garlinghouse alleging that XRP, a public crypto that has been trading on the open market since 2013, should have been registered as a security. And of all the bad things that happened in 2020, this was certainly one to cap the year. But what I said then remains painfully true today. This is an attack on crypto in the United States, not just the company Ripple. Some took the SEC's allegations at face value, thought this was a one-off, but no longer has been a watershed year for crypto. Acceptance and awareness of the opportunity to bring billions of people into the global financial community has never been so clear. Remember, there are billions of people that are unbanked and underbanked today. It's been incredible to see a lot less maximalism and more builders joining the industry. Absolutely. The recent price runs, thanks to this last year's entire bull run, has brought a lot more attention. We have Sam, FTX CEO, whose net worth is 20 times larger than the CEO of JP Morgan Chase. That's going to get a lot of attention. We have the Staples Center changing their name to Crypto.com Arena out of LA. We also have the Arena in Miami change their name to FTX Arena. You can't make this stuff up. Proud to say that it was Ripple the company's strongest year ever. XRP-based on-demand liquidity payments accounted for 25% of dollar volume across RippleNet. And ODL transactions are up 25x from quarter three of 2020 and up 130% quarter over quarter. They are still growing. They are still building despite this lawsuit. And even if the SEC does in fact come after other groups like Cardano, I still think that ADA will survive. This is a war on crypto. This is not just XRP. Not to mention new ODL corridors like Japan, the UAE, which is going to be a behemoth. Remember, global remittance rates there are roughly 7%. With XRP, we can reduce that to a tenth of a penny. And our CBDC solution on a private version of the public XRP ledger, partnering with Bhutan and Palau for central bank digital currencies. All of this growth came from outside the United States. Which brings me back to the SEC. As chair, Gary Gensler seeks to expand its remit. He has taken an aggressively anti-crypto approach and companies are already moving outside the United States. Web 2 was built with many American companies, but Web 3.0, or whatever we want to call it, is ignoring its prior statements. The SEC today will not answer any questions about the legal status of Ethereum. I'm wishing ETH well, but don't you find it fishy? Much less anything else. Is the agency actually living up to its mission of protecting investors with regulation by enforcement in what Hester Peirce calls strategic ambiguity? Calling crypto the Wild West is a farce. Most are complying with financial regulators globally. This industry should not be punished for asking for regulatory clarity and regulation that is consistently applied with a level playing field. And now this is ironic. I know I posted this on Instagram last year. Ironically enough, and a personal favorite of mine is the brilliance of David Schwartz right here. This is what he predicted could happen almost two years before the SEC filed their lawsuit against Ripple. We have Nostradamus. Check this out. Now this is David Schwartz right here predicting exactly what the SEC did. This was back in 2019. Now listen to David Schwartz. We don't, it's very hard to decide how the laws um, apply. And that's why I think you'll see many organizations, Ripple and many others, uh, Coin Center is another, lobbying regulators not so much to change the law, but to clarify it, like to tell us what it is that we need to do so that someone doesn't come down two years later and say, hey, what you were doing completely in the open and completely transparently for the last four years was illegal from day one and you should have known that. Awkward. And we're like, we meet with you like every week about what we're doing. And now you're telling us we should have realized four years ago that it was fundamentally and completely illegal. Like that doesn't make any sense. And so now you can see Jay Clayton, you can see their public calendars and meeting with Ripple years ago. So they've been nothing but transparent. This is a political play. Also, I'm not going down the rabbit hole here, guys. No, I'm not becoming a Riddler. I'm just sharing some of the facts. Marking roughly one year for the Ripple vs. SEC lawsuit. Happy 21st anniversary, which is yesterday, the winter solstice, historically the darkest day of the year, which was December 21st, the 21st day of the month, the 21st year, 2021, and the 21st century. How strange. Another quote I like, volatility, the crazy, crazy price swings that we see, the ups and downs, is the price you pay for returns. High risk, high reward, but also know that nothing is guaranteed. Now check out this, Crypto Eddy, a big national retailers convention in New York City, January 16th, 17th, and the 18th at Javits. 
This is an Aussie startup built on the XRP ledger and they will be in the special zone of the expo that gives a sneak peek at the newest companies changing retail with innovation. So all built on the XRP ledger will have to keep an eye on this. Next up, Bank XRP highlighting Swiss Route RippleNet adapter providing interoperability between existing messaging systems and RippleNet. I know we've talked about IBIS many times before, highlighting what is RippleNet, joining RippleNet, and the benefits that this gives. And we can see Finastra. They need no introduction. Remember, the biggest focus is on assets that are also working and building with offices in Switzerland, whether that be Casper Labs, Cough Cough, Alliance Block. Polkadot, Ripple's XRP, already having offices in Zurich, Switzerland, right here with the Service Bureau, which has the highest number of banks in the country. And notice this exclusive offering with Ripple, the company, includes Ripple connectivity and out-of-the-box integration. And you have a video right down below, and please recall that MasterCard was on that panel, and yes, they already said, yep, we are Ripple partners. Even Crypto Eddie highlighting this again. When the XRP ODL switch flips, here's another loaded channel. Swiss route, RippleNet adapter, 1 billion monthly transactions. And we have the link right here. And the biggest thing I want to highlight is Finastra. They are a behemoth and they've been putting out more news than ever before. We just did a recent video a couple days ago regarding Finastra. Connected to the top 48 of the 50 banks in the world, we're talking over 9,000 clients. Please check out that recent video I did if you have not yet already. So you can see right here, MasterCard, Thunes, Ripple with this Alchemy solution. So we'll keep an eye on this Alchemy payment processing suite. Next up, guys, I know this tweet was deleted, but I'm sure all of you saw this shared by Rath Economist. It is official. Visa now owns Currency Cloud, a Ripple user. Now, Currency Cloud, to be frank, is really partnered with all of these FIs and hundreds of customers. But remember, Visa did in fact purchase the Ripple customer, Earthport, years ago for a couple hundred million dollars as well. You can see on Currency Cloud's website back in 2020, Currency Cloud announces partnership with Ripple to process cross-border payments on RippleNet. And there's still going to be somebody saying, well, they're not using XRP yet, but they do not understand the staggered approach to all of this. It's another study by Visa. And this study found actually five days ago that digital payments are the preferred way in the United States to send money abroad. Go figure. Also, the Digital Pound Foundation. Remember, consideration from wider central bank digital currency use cases is needed on a collaborative basis. And we can see a few well-known names. Accenture, early Ripple investor. CGI has a Ripple intelligent gateway. Hmm. We also have Quant, one of the best. AVAX of Avalanche. Electronium with ETN, I believe. And then Ripple and XRP. I'm not betting against these groups. And AVAX has done exceptionally well in 2021. Remember that AVAX's consensus mechanism is what's being leveraged within Flare networks, just as the XRP ledger is being leveraged for extremely efficient transactions. Also wanted to share this, I feel like I share this every couple months or every couple years, the Bitcoin price chart on the weekly time frame. This red line is the 200 weekly moving average. Now historically, and of course this only goes back to about 2015, but that's still an ample amount of price history. Bitcoin is typically used this 200 weekly moving average as support. Yes, I know we wick below, but look at the candle bodies just riding this as support. Coming up here, coming here, 2019, a double bottom again acting as support. And then the March 2020 crash, we have candle bodies right there. Now, yes, I do know that we wicked well below it. It was scary for a couple weeks, but just wanted to show you the candle bodies are still holding that 200 moving average. And as Bitcoin's price continues to move in an uptrend year over year on the macro, not on the 30 minute chart, we can see this 200 moving average has moved up to almost $19,000. Could this be acting as support year over year? And last but not least, sharing some hopium with X underscore Anderson, a must follow. We can see right here the payment stack and the evolution. Notice this is the Federal Reserve System. Now, Ripple joined the NACHA Alliance, and we can actually click this link. This is something I share every few months because this is just a beautiful infographic. Now, please remember, SWIFT sending over $5 trillion on a daily basis. The foreign exchange market over $6.6 .6 trillion on a daily basis. Good thing that XRP and Ripple have some direct relationships with both. We can see Ripple has joined the Nacha Alliance. Well, who is Nacha? Founded back in 74, one of the country's premier industry groups representing, sounds like SWIFT, 11,000 FIs and oversees the ACH network, Automated Clearinghouse, which is the electronic network that's the backbone of the United States payments. Hmm. Remember the Digital Pound Foundation I just highlighted, Accenture, early Ripple investor, and CGI as well. Bank of America and Ripple are actually neighbors with their offices in San Francisco, and they're an active RippleNet user. And this is where XRP, the XRP ledger, will be solving the issue of the payment stack. We have the application layer, the banks, the governance, the messaging, think ISO and message routing, and hopefully information-rich data eventually with these ISO tokens, not just XRP. We're talking a variety of those X assets, or even ELGO, IOTA, you name it. And then settlement. This is where XRP solves the issue for instantaneous settlement with finality.
and you can type this in if you guys are curious. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Remember, all links are in the video description, and until next time.